Well, there are lots of great places to get out and visit and enjoy outside right here in our community. This latest one, I recently visited myself. It, Channel 3's John Martin takes us to Booker T. State Washington Park. And that's this week's Three in Your Town. Take a look. So if I were to bring up Booker T. Washington State Park, you'd probably say, yeah, it's that park named after that guy that did that thing, and you'd have no idea. And that's okay. Let's get an education together about it, because at the end of the day, that's what Booker T. would have actually wanted. This is a recreation area for all types of different people. Um, a lot of people come out here and fish. They uh, come out here and canoe. They come out here and do a lot of their different water activities. And people should experience this park because it does have a more intimate setting. It's a smaller park, so it's only like 353 acres, you know? So the park is super um, intimate and you can like get to know a lot of people here. So it's pretty much like a big family. <laughs> Booker T. Washington State Park is one of two state parks in Tennessee designed for African Americans during the Jim Crow era. In addition to the beauty of the grounds here, this entire park can be viewed as an educational walkabout. Most prominently, of course, the information made available about the park's namesake, a boy born into slavery, Booker T. Washington. While he was a slave, he actually carried his um, master's daughter's books to school. So that's what drove his education, his need and his desire for education was just looking through the window like, hey, I wish I could sit down and read and write and learn too. Dire poverty ruled out regular schooling. At age nine, he began working first in a salt furnace and later in a coal mine. He enrolled at the Hampton University in 1872, working as a janitor to help pay expenses. In 1881, Washington was selected to head a newly established normal school for African Americans at Tuskegee, an institution with two small converted buildings, no equipment, and very little money. He started recruiting people early and they started to build their own school. So they built a kiln and they started to make bricks and they started to sell those bricks and they built this amazing, humongous school. Like it's huge now. That is just shows like he was very like headstrong and I want to educate my people. I want to uh, uplift them and I want us to do it by, we might have to stay down a little bit and we might have to learn all these agricultural and, and industrial pursuits, but we will gain respect this way. He urged his fellow blacks, most of whom were impoverished and illiterate farm laborers, to temporarily abandon their efforts to win full civil rights and political power and instead to cultivate their industrial and farming skills so as to attain economic security. This very controversial viewpoint alienated many but caught the attention of Washington, D.C. Booker would soon become an advisor to a string of American presidents. He was like the most influential African American at that time. But um, even though he did this and it caused all that racial uproar for him being in the White House, he was also like, he was playing the fence. He was doing two side things. Again, there are so many educational opportunities at today's Booker T. Washington State Park, but there are also opportunities to simply relax. Even if you don't, even if you don't like program or anything like that and you just come out just to, on a lunch break, honestly, there's like nice places to sit and just, you know, watch, look at the beauty of Tennessee. So, and we're in a good little area, you know? <laughs> 